Welcome to Pulse of Cyber Command. I'm Terrence, and here is where you command your cyber life. Today, we will be doing a reaction with Unix Guy, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers out there. Unix Guy, I've been watching him for a few years now, has been very helpful on my journey. And what we're going to take a look at is technical skills you need for cybersecurity. So, before we get into that, Please like and subscribe the video. I greatly appreciate it. Helps with the metrics, helps us little guys, and let's get to it. I worked in IT for seven years before I landed my first cybersecurity job, and I had a degree and many certifications. But can you become a cybersecurity professional way faster? Absolutely. In this video, I will share with you the cheapest and fastest way to build technical skills if you're starting out in cybersecurity, so you can gain the confidence and knowledge to land your dream job and progress in your career. What inspired this video is an annual performance conversation I had with a cyber analyst at work. Her name is Amy and she joined our team last year fresh out of uni, so she didn't have any technical skills. She wants to progress to the next level and become a senior cyber analyst, but what's holding her is the lack of technical skills. In the last 12 months, she worked on some cyber risks projects. She also was involved in some vulnerability management work, but she found when it comes to investigating cyber incidents, she needs to analyze maybe network traffic or OS logs or even if she is involved in a project where she had to look at an architectural diagram to do yeah I highly recommend as well uh, if you're looking to be like a SOC analyst or even a cybersecurity analyst or cybersecurity engineer definitely look into these uh, security information and event management systems out there the different tools like Splunk, Elk uh, there's a bunch more but those are some of the most widely used sim tools so i i definitely understand right here when i saw <laughs> when i saw all of this all the uh the, the tags and categories i knew it was splunk so definitely useful for those roles and it definitely applies here a security assessment she found that she couldn't keep up but also she found it extremely intimidating especially as she's still new to the field which is stopping her from working on bigger projects that will ultimately lead to promotions and higher titles and better salaries so i designed a plan for her to fill in the technical gaps that she needs now unfortunately there is so much conflicting information on the internet and from people that i talk to some people are under the impression that you need to be an expert in networking and operating systems and that you need to Absolutely. be some kind of a hacker man before you even work in cybersecurity. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have people who think that you can get a six-figure cybersecurity salary in seven days if you <laughs> learn how to push a button in a vulnerability management scanner. In seven days. Personally, I don't know anyone that could actually believe that. You could get it in seven days, but there are boot camps out there that I know of. I almost signed up for a boot camp and they were guaranteeing me i'm not going to say who the boot camp was but they guaranteed within like six months i would have have a position so and this was after maybe a year and a half almost two years of me studying cybersecurity in my university so yeah i i definitely say go at your own pace you know don't believe you know, you can get in now and within a few months. There have been some anomalies. There's always an exception to the rule. Certain people can get in and have gotten in in, say, like, you know, three months of, you know, getting certifications or projects. And a lot of those, I, I believe, have to do with networking. So a lot of networking is, is a very huge and underutilized process in order to get into the field. So Definitely know that on average, it, I usually see in my personal experience and everyone I talk to takes maybe like a year or two for them to get in. I personally, it took me, I, I've been studying cybersecurity since 2021. So I just got my first internship role last year. So it took me a little over two years, if that gives you some idea. So definitely set the right expectations for yourself now so you're not disappointed later. 
So she felt overwhelmed when she was looking for the best way to get those technical skills. And I also felt the same way when I was starting out. I didn't know where to start, but the real problem is following those type of plans can be a gigantic waste of time, waste of money, and it can significantly slow your progress. So to avoid all of the nonsense, here is my plan. Number one, if you're completely new to IT, you don't know how to troubleshoot laptops, you don't know how to troubleshoot computers, usually the go-to recommendation is Comptia A+. I don't really recommend Comptia A+. I think it's way overpriced for the value that you're getting out of it. And I also don't think you need to spend that much time and money on that basic material. Instead, I recommend the Google IT Support Professional Certificate. It really introduces you it's, to the basics of IT and the basics of IT support, and you can even learn the help to scroll if that's what you want after you get it. The training is hosted on Coursera a paid platform but you get seven days free trial i'll put a link to it in the description box below the second skill that you need is networking again conventional wisdom will tell you to do something like a ccna or perhaps network plus my opinion is if your goal is to work in cybersecurity or even cloud computing you don't really need to pass exams for those certificates instead what i want you to do is go to youtube and in the search box just type professor messer network plus and there you have it completely yes. free training for CompTIA network plus where you can watch the video you learn the material you don't really need to pass that exam. I actually use Professor Messer to prepare for my CompTIA Security Plus exam so he is definitely right you you don't need to get a networking certification I don't have a networking certification but I did take like advanced networking classes uh, currently I just took one last year an advanced networking course but I've taken networking courses in my associate's degree as well as my bachelor's degree. So I, I got my learning from, from that and also studying for the Security Plus exam. So you do have to know that for certain certifications. My recommendation is to go for the Security Plus, uh, but that's what I did. That was my first or my second after my Python certification. I went for Security Plus. So I don't know too much about the Google IT support, but I do hear good things from other professionals on LinkedIn and uh, through word of mouth. So, you know, definitely understand that you don't necessarily have to get network certifications, networking certifications. Them. And if you're so worried about job search and keywords and job searches, well, you can put these skills in your CV. So for example, you can put in your CV that you have knowledge in TCP IP and basic networking protocols. You don't actually need to pass those exams. And if you're really, really keen on passing the exams and taking them, by all means, please do so. Just know it's not really needed and it's not something that I would personally do. And I told Amy that she doesn't really need to pass those exams. Next up is learning Linux, which oh, is yes. an operating system that you will probably need to use as a cybersecurity analyst you don't need to become a linux system administrator you don't need to become a linux expert but you need to know how to navigate your way through linux you may need to run some tools on linux you may need to look through some logs on linux luckily we have the cyber mentor academy they have an extremely cheap and high quality training that will introduce you yes, to linux and give you exactly what you need as a cyber security professional i'll put a link for them in the description box below now just a note if you actually want to be an ethical hacker or a pen test which is a different career path than a cyber security analyst then you will need to know a little bit more Linux. I talked about how to become an... Yes, since he said that, um, here we are. Linux Pocket Guide. I actually use this to prepare for my CAS Plus exam recently. I'm not a Linux expert, <laughs> but I do a lot of CTFs as well as side projects using virtual machines. So different, if you get yourself some, you know, Pocket Guides... Uh, things like that. I actually have a mouse pad here that has Linux commands. You can't see it. Maybe one day I'll show you guys. But I have that. Uh, I also have the Blue Team Field Manual. This has uh, a lot of Linux commands like Nmap, vulnerability scanning, things of that nature in it. And it's really something that helps me if I'm doing a capture the flag, uh, which I'm actually doing this weekend with Hack the Box. But these are very helpful. And, you know, so a lot of us, you know, aren't Linux experts. I've been, you know, dabbling in Linux for the past couple of years. I'm getting better at it. So uh, an opera operating system like this, especially if you're used to Windows, I would recommend getting yourself like a, you know, a small book or something like that that has Linux commands or using cheat sheets for now that you can refer to and get that muscle memory going. It'll help you. 
ethical hacker in this video. Last but not least is a programming language. Now this is optional for Amy. She will only need it if she wants to work in a security operation center and automate some tasks. Or if she choose to pursue ethical hacking, then she will need to know some programming. Again, using the Cyber Mentor Academy, they have a really high quality and affordable training for Python, which I will link in the description box below. Now the real problem is I think these courses are not enough. Yes, they will give Amy those skills, but unfortunately I think even after Amy does these courses she may still feel inadequate because once she do these courses she will realize that there is still a lot more that she doesn't know which creates the good old imposter syndrome she told me she had to deal with people who talked down at her and weren't nice with her and she thinks it's because she doesn't have the skills but what I really think is it's a problem in the IT world and more specifically in cybersecurity. There is a lot of egos and there is a lot of unsavory characters who are insecure and they want to feel good about themselves by putting others down and that can be very very challenging for someone who's starting out and still thinks they don't have enough skills and that's when I tried to shift her thinking and explain to her that learning is a lifelong journey Journey. I showed her that even I, after 20 years in the field, still have a plan, still have things that I work on and things that I study on, and I think she should do the same. It's not about knowing everything, but it's about having a plan and being better today than you were yesterday. And this will never end. And unfortunately, there is no solution to those unsavory characters and insecure people in the IT world. The only solution is for us to be the best versions of ourselves. And this mindset is the secret that will lead to more senior roles, it will lead to higher salaries, and it will lead to excellence and this is precisely what I talked about in this video where I talk about the best way to gain the highest salary possible in cyber security and I'll see you there so yeah I really enjoy you and this guy's perspective and I definitely agreed with the last part it's 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 a lifelong journey if you're planning on being in this industry for the next uh, 10, 20 years, then you're definitely going to have to accept that you'll always you'll always be learning something. There there is a learning curve when you start, but once you get in and you start studying and you definitely make a plan, you understand what your niche is and what path you want to take. SOC analyst, ethical hacking, you know, uh, threat analyst, threat intelligence, incident responder. If you figure that out, I, that, I think that'll make it a lot easier for you for you guys if you if you really understand what it is that you want to do. And CTFs, Capture the Flags, really help with that because when I did my first Capture the Flag, uh, the NCL competition, I knew that vulnerability scanning and, um, you know, uh, uh, threat uh, intelligence and things like that were definitely you know up my alley and uh, i found that to be very useful to help me figure out what my niche is so once you find out who, what, what niche you you want to go and what path start networking and talking to professionals and ask them how they got to where they are uh, which i've done and it's really helped me understand what i wanted to go for as far as certifications and and learning courses and and different skills and tools and less of that imposter syndrome it, it does creep up that is a real thing but i believe uh, after some time you'll uh, you'll get by that so um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh keep your finger on the pulse of cyber and uh, have a good one